the hell do these guys keep winning? It's Rock May, John. Okay, cut it out. <laughs> ah. By the way, those the Rocky uniforms are awful. You should call the it Colin Mayo. Look at the backs when you when they show the back and you see the name and the number. Is it horrible? It looks little league. Is it because of the it's whole, the worst in all of baseball? Because the fanatic That's not situation. The worst. I'm not saying it because it's your team, Nick. I'm just saying it's really bad on their uniforms. I mean, look, it looks like it looks like someone oh, took it, it to a, oh, no, one of those places horrible. where they iron on the numbers. It does look bad. Someone who had the pleasure of playing Major League Baseball when yes. the uniforms were good. Yes. And they weren't ripping all the time and he wasn't sweating through them. <laughs> or at least it was that noticeable. That's true. Former Blue Jay and Major Leaguer Pat Vendetti joins us on the 42 Degrees the Source hotline. Pat, are you thankful you didn't have to wear these uniforms as a major leaguer? I'll tell you what, I think I, I, think I could suffer through it if it meant I was still pitching here. <laughs> That's a good point. The good set, way to view the, things. The check still clears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd put up with those uh, see-through uniforms for a few more years. Oh, Pat joining us here uh, as the Chris Gradiville, uh baseball camp, the gratitude camp. Is coming up. Uh, this is, is this three or four years now? Three years, right? Year number three, yes. Year number three. It's going to be at Creighton University. It's a one day camp for kids six to sixteen years old, um, and former major leaguers such as Pat, other local guys uh, who played major league ball, college players, college coaches, all going to be there teaching. All the proceeds go to the Chris Gradiville Scholarship Fund, and I know that. This camp has sold out the last couple of years, and we just have a few spots left, right? Yeah, we're getting there. As of this morning, I think we had 35 spots left uh, with, with about a month to go. So we, we cap it at 250. Um, so, yeah, there's already over 200 there, and we like to, uh, we like to get this thing filled up. It means a ton to, to Chris's family. Uh, financially, it means a lot to getting his scholarship uh, finished through. We'll, we'll make – probably $20,000 for this one day camp this year, all going to, like you said, that scholarship. And, you know, when we started this, it was just, what can we do to keep, keep his spirit and memory alive? And that's where the baseball camp came in. And it's, it's not quite like any other camp. It's, you, you are going to learn things without a doubt from the, uh, the coaches that are there. But I think if you ask these kids, this is probably one of the more fun camps they go to just based on the energy that we bring, you know, the outfield station where kids are running around the outfield, diving, the catching station with Matt Golliver, and then obviously coach service with the infield. It's, it, it's a high energy camp. Just, just like Chris would have wanted. Pat, along those lines, I was going to ask you, given that this is now year three, like what, what have you learned about how to do something like this or about yourself as you've kind of dived back into this process, preparing for year three? You know what I've learned that, uh, People are very willing to help when you have a cause like this. It, it takes an army of people to put something like this together. And uh, it's, it's pretty much a yes at every turn because of the person Chris was and for the reasons we're doing this. It, and it, it brings joy to a, to a horrible, horrible situation to know that there's so many people. You know, Evan Porter over at UNO, Darren Munns, who has no ties to Creighton. He got to meet Chris um, one year and he drove up you know, through, through the night from Columbia last year, he's going to do it again this year. Just a bunch of people that are very willing to help. And, uh, it, it makes it a fun day. Brian Dunsing, former major leaguer, Tyler Cloyd, former major leaguer, Pat, former major leaguer among those who are going to be there. I'm curious, Pat, cause you, as a youngster certainly went through camps. you were, as when you were a player, uh, probably helped out, volunteered at a lot of camps. This game has changed a lot in 20 years. Uh, the way we approach the game, the way hitters approach, the way pitching is done. Have you noticed a difference in how camps are, and what kids are interested in learning or what is being taught at camps? And kind of what is the approach you want to take with this one to make sure that the right things are being taught for today's game? Yeah, with with this, you know, there's different levels of of players that are there your six and seven year olds they're they're there to have a good time but for those kids that are closer to the high school level to be able to talk to tyler and brian and darren ruff got a commitment from him this afternoon he oh was, great when i talked to him earlier it was you know dependent on if he was playing or not this year but he's bringing his son henry out to the camp and, and darren's going to be there too but just sharing that knowledge you know things that maybe their coaches don't understand and you don't understand until you play collegiately or professionally tricks of the trade, infield footwork like coach service teaches. It's 
it's some advanced things for those that can handle it. And for the kids that are, you know, just learning the game, it's about having a ton of fun and, and hustling and playing with a ton of energy. Pat, along the lines of what John just asked you, but more from a broader perspective about the current game right now, especially at the highest level, I, I wonder what your take is on the, the debate that's happening within baseball right now about pitchers, number of pitches thrown, you know, being prepared for the majors. Obviously, Paul Skeen's making his debut. That was a large portion of the conversation while he was still down in the minors. What, what have you made of it as a former major league pitcher? You know, first of all, I, the current brand, I love it. I love turning on a game, the pitch clock the pace of play, it's all what Coach Service has been teaching guys for 20 years at Creighton. And, you know, I wish there would have been a pitch clock when I was playing just because I think it forces the batter to be a little bit more rushed where they can't step outside of the box. Think, you know, when you have 15, 20 seconds, you can process everything that's going on and maybe understand a little bit better what pitch is coming your way. But when you have to look away at a clock, get your feet back in the box, pick up the baseball from the pitcher, there's a whole new wrinkle to the, to this whole thing that I think makes the game more fun. And as far as you know, the injuries and the other things that are kind of plaguing the game, I think when you guys are when you have kids that are training like they are at an early age, growing up with the medicine, you know, or the weighted balls and the the strength training, it's all necessary stuff. But it's just such an unnatural motion that if you're doing it with such force, it's just kind of inevitable. But at the same time, it's what makes make, makes the game a ton of fun. People love turning on the game and seeing 10 pitches over 100 miles an hour. It's exciting. Pat Vendetti joining us. The Gratitude Camp coming up June 12th at Creighton. It's a one-day camp. You can register right now. As Pat just mentioned, about 35 spots left. Want to sell this thing out. All the proceeds go towards the Chris Gradable Scholarship Fund. And uh, as Pat said, uh, they're getting ready to, to put a big old check over there for uh, for all the contributions from this year. Kind of on that subject of what Josh just asked, Pat, we had a subject yesterday as we were talking to our uh, baseball guy, Mike Farron. There's a lot of suggestions out there for how to save starting pitching. Now, I know by design, you were more of a relief pitcher uh, in your career, but one of the what do you think of ideas to try to extend outings, whether it's reducing the number of relievers you can use, reducing the number of pitchers you can have on a roster? You just mentioned how much fun it is to watch today's game. Does that fun extend to pitchers not going as deep as they used to back in the day? Yeah, when you get into those those conversations, if you take away the relievers, obviously that's going to force the starter into the game. What I do think it would force is a little bit more strategic pitching, pitching to contact, getting the ball to sink, getting to cut a little bit more rather than just those elevated fastballs and, you know, really nasty, nasty swing and miss sliders. I think you would see more of a, a Greg Maddox type approach or a Kyle Hendricks. And I think that would be, you know, valued a little bit more if they did reduce that. But again, at what what cost that comes with? Because then, you know, your your elite starters that they're going to obviously take care of. They don't want to see schemes throw 120 pitches in a game this year. You know, it's, it's going to be monitored. I think in the minors he was extremely monitored. I, I don't know exactly what his pitch count was, but it's just it's just one of those things that it's it's going to come down to what each organization wants and, and how they want it to go forward. All right, Pat, most important question. How fast could you throw two baseballs at the same time? <laughs> what? Well, well, me and fast never went uh, hand in hand. So I, <laughs> I don't even know if I could put a number on that. <laughs> at the same time. At the same time. Both arms, same time. You know, normal well, stuff. That's about, normal stuff, right? Yeah, you know, all the all the momentum you can get without stepping. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, yeah exactly. What foot do you lead with? Oh, man. I think you got to jump, jump and throw a jump, throw something mm -hmm. like that. What was, what was your top mile per hour, either arm? I would say probably 91 righty. And then way back when 86 left-handed, but, but towards the end there, I was 79 to 81 left-handed and then 84 to 88 right-handed. Pat Vendetti joining us. He's one of the guys helping run the gratitude camps coming up on June 12th. Again, gratitude camps, and that's G-R-A-D. 
uh, I got to make sure I'm spelling this right. I have to uh, look. C-U-D-E. You got it. Thank you. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I just want to make sure I say it right. G-R-A-D-I-T-U-D-E camps. Dot com. We've also tweeted out the link yes, um, so that you can go in, as Pat mentioned, about uh, 35 uh, spots are left in the camp. It, it, it It's really heartwarming to see all the support for Chris. It shows that even with bitter rivals like Creighton and Nebraska have been, like Creighton and Omaha, Omaha and Nebraska, all you guys, especially you Omaha guys, of which you were one, Chris was one, there's a brotherhood that is there no matter what color you wore in college that it stays with you throughout the course of your life. Without a doubt. You know, when we reached out to Brian for this, it's just the quickest no or the quickest yes you can imagine. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where there was always a deep respect for each other. We, we didn't like each other when we were playing against each other. But now we, you know, we have the Jasker Cup, which is a golf outing featuring alumni from both Creighton and Nebraska that guys put on year in and year out where 30, 40 guys get together and play. And when we were playing, it was just such a, a good time for, for college baseball in Nebraska. You know, you had Gordon and Komenay and the college world series appearances. And then the multiple regional teams that we were a part of at Creighton going to that Lincoln regional in 05, there was just a lot of excitement around the game then. And I'm very grateful for all those battles we had with those guys and, definitely respect what they do amazing that uh creighton just completed a sweep of both crate of both omaha and nebraska this year yet we're not going to the conference tournament this is the weirdest baseball year i think i've ever been a part of it's criminal though that you know this is one of the only conferences in america where your season can end without a conference tournament you know even in basketball everybody for the most part gets to go to a conference tournament and i think if you put creighton in front of anybody in that big east tournament they would not want to play them. And it's really unfortunate that, you know, the Big East can only send four teams for an for, uh, end-of-the-year tournament like that with so much on the line. And I just – I don't think that's fair, and it should not be like that. Famously, Creighton – and this was a couple of years after Pat left, but Creighton finished dead last in the Valley, then went down to Springfield and won all five games and ended up in the NCAA tournament. So, yeah, I mean, it can be it's done. a crazy game. It is. Uh, it, it, it's unfortunate. Again, gratitudecamps.com, G-R-A-D-I-T-U-D-E, camps.com. Register now. It is June 12th. And what are the times? Are, are there are there different times uh, for the day yeah. camp? Yeah, so to keep it uh, even with the number of kids, uh, it's, it's 8 to 10, 15, and then 11 to 1, 15, all the same ages. We're going to have a couple extra stations this year with smaller groups. Um, that was one of the things we've learned that we need a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit uh, more from the coaches. So we've, we've got some more coaches coming this year and some more fun coming for these guys. Pat, uh, it, great job that you guys are all doing. And on Friday night, the uh, final Friday of the regular season, it'll be Chris Gradville night at the ballpark. Um, and of course, this camp going on in one month. Pat, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks again for joining us. Great to hear your voice again. And uh, we will catch up down the road. Hey, I appreciate you guys with the help with this. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Pat. Pat Vendetti, the great Pat Vendetti joining us here.